Our sponsor this month is Published, an affiliate of Village Voices. Published offers all author services from writing tips, critiques, manuscript evaluations, and editing, as well as tips to help you become published. If you prefer to self-publish, purchase the step-by-step book on publishing through Amazon, or purchase services a la carte, from formatting to creating custom covers or even tips to gather endorsements. The staff is headed by two professional writers. After your books are published, either trade paper, electronically, or both, purchase marketing tips, web services, book trailers, or turn your book into an audiobook. Publish provides all your writing, publishing, and marketing needs. So give them a call at 941-748-6865. Contact them online at dgould 497 at AOL.com or go to the website at www.publishedavillagevoices.webs.com. Welcome to Culture Coast. The intro you just heard was by guitarist Al Musitano. Culture Coast has been on the air for nearly three years with artists and musicians from many venues. Recently, I have discovered a rich new area of the arts to learn more about, filmmaking. We started a few weeks ago with producer Tony Lenzo of South Shore Productions, and last week we revisited the Muffin Chuckers as they are now involved in creating original songs for a local feature film, Catching Junior Tate. This week we will revisit one of the actors, Henry Lawrence, a local celebrity and an actor in Catching Junior Tate. In upcoming weeks, I will be bringing you other members of our vibrant filmmaking community while continuing to cover our other arts. Hope everyone finds the path to their fashion. And today we're interviewing Henry Lawrence, a vocal entertainer. He is a singer who has been singing here in the area for quite some time. Okay. Hi, Henry. How are you today? I am great, Donna. How are you doing? I'm doing good. This The weather's holding out. I've made it through the rainstorms without getting soaked, and it's that's a good day. <laughs> and you didn't melt. I didn't. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you first start singing? When did... Were you? Did you sing in school? Did you sing before school, choir, church? I sang, I sang all my life. I uh, grew up singing in the fields, you know, while we were working. Uh, during the holidays on Christmas, me and my cousin would walk up and down the streets. Back then, we had dirt roads. And we'd, we'd sing Christmas carols. We'd sing uh, some Motown stuff. Uh, and in third grade, I did my first actual, I did a stage play. And then the play was an island play, but we were on a boat. And I performed the song, Dale. Dale, come and you want to go home? I love that song. I did that song in third grade in a play. And uh, that was my first on stage performance. And then I sang in the, uh, the choir in church. And, of course, when I got to high school, which was seventh grade back then, well, it was seventh to eighth, but the, the elementary school campus was right on the same ground. And uh, I got in the course. So I sang in the course uh, throughout pretty much my high school uh, time. And Now, where did you go to high school? I went to Palmetto Lincoln, and then they closed it um, in 69, my uh, junior year, so my senior year, 69, 70, school that year. That stinks that you got switched in it your was, senior it year. It was horrible. <laughs> and I went to uh, Manatee High, Braden Manatee, my senior year. 
So yeah, that was that's that. So you grew stinks. up here with dirt roads and and watch the whole thing come to fruition and and grow up into a real town. I did, and there was farm orange trees everywhere, tomato uh, farms, strawberries, and now, I did all that. I I understand from researching you that you actually were a professional football player. I was. Okay, how did that happen? I mean, if you were all into the singing, how did you, and, and you transferred schools in your senior year, how did you get picked up? Well, I actually wasn't, didn't know I would be into singing like that. I always loved singing, did it in the choir, of course, and then had some plays where I did a little spat. But, and then football, I started playing. We played Sandlock, actually, when I was 9, 10 years old. Um, I played football, Sandlock. With the big boys, because I was at 10 years old, 11 years old, I was 185, 90 pounds. Wow, so, so you were a big boy too. <laughs> I was a big boy and uh, played it and never really thought about uh, any aspects of it. Uh, growing up as a farm boy, traveling as a migrant farm worker, it, was, uh, it, it, it wasn't a part of my program because weekends I basically we spent in the, in the fields working. But I was a, I was a good athlete, and I started playing. I played a little basketball, well, a lot of basketball. Because you're very tall. Uh, Sandlock basketball is the Palmetto Youth Fence Center. It still is. Uh, ninth grade, I started. Uh, I came home because we'd be on the on the season working, and we stay uh, all the way to October, November, and then one my ninth grade year, my mom and them they decided to let us come home, me and my brother. He was in 11th, I was in 9th. And so we came home and, and played football. And I, I knew how to, basically, because I played sandlock and stuff. But I left the field one day, and the next day I was in Palmetto, out on the football field, practicing football. Singing, I can't quite explain it. It's just something that I did. When I, I was in college, I was supposed to join the course there. And I didn't. I got caught up in so much other stuff, the uh, student government, and because football practicing, and and then on weekends after football season, I was coming home every week, going working the fields. And <laughs> so I didn't have time to to join the course, which I regret, uh, because it would have I think would have taken me on a different path, and and earlier I would have maybe realized that I I should have learned some instruments. And I did in, in early high school and got away from well, it. Well, if you think about it, and I've talked to some other singers about this, your voice is your instrument. That is your instrument. You know how to use it to make it sound the way you want it to sound. And you, you have recorded. You've been singing professionally for years, haven't you? I have, actually. It was an accident because that was not the intent. <laughs> uh, but when I, uh, in college, uh I pledged my junior year, and we had 12 online, and, and we had our skit and everything. We had danced. We had some phenomenal dancing and stuff back then, you know, like the stuff you see now. We did it back then. You see the movie Step In and all that stuff. Right, really right. Doing. But we did all that stuff, and I was the, I was the, 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 uh, the, the, the bring-up man from the back. I was the number 12. When we got ready to go over for the Greek extravaganza, I actually ended up being the one to sing. Nobody had ever, you know, at the school, because I, I wasn't doing singing there. And uh, <laughs> so no one no one realized that, that I could sing, except, you know, guys I was around, you know, you could climb on, doing Motown. And right, right. Doing all that stuff. And so when we hit the stage, and I was the singer, you know, doing, you know, and another buddy of mine's, we had a song for the fraternity uh, off of the, the song You Make Me Feel Brand New and Greg Coleman who played with the Minnesota Vikings and Cleveland Browns uh, after I came out. We kind of turned it out, you know. And <laughs> so everybody was saying, well, killer, we, why you didn't tell us you could sing? You know, um, <laughs> I didn't think to tell you, you know. Uh, so when I went to the Raiders, I was drafted in the first round. My junior year made uh, Pittsburgh Curry All-American team. 
And then my senior year, I made five different All-American teams. So how did that feel, coming from working the fields and now all of a sudden you're a hot commodity in the professional football? That changed guess, your life a lot, didn't it? It, it? it changed my life, but my life had been changed anyway through my whole life experience. And, and, and many would look at, you know, growing up as a migrant farm worker as a curse or something, but for me and for my siblings and stuff coming up, it actually was a true blessing because it taught a lot of things that I would not have learned, you know, in everyday life coming up here. You know, that kids, you know, pretty much are sheltered from a lot of stuff. But oh, I, they have no uh, idea. <laughs> oh, they have no idea. I And I, I would sit around the fire. You know, we get off from work at night, you know, they have the big barrel, you know, the 50-pound barrel where they sit up and put wood in and, and the wine oils and stuff, they'd sit around the fire and they'd be dipping that snuff of tobacco. <laughs> and we had guys that could play the guitar, like B.B. Kang could play, they play the blues. I'd sing, you know, and at Monica players. And that was at, just part of who you were. That was, that, was, that was it. I mean, I grew up with it, but they would also sit and share their wisdom. And there were many that had been in college, some had even been, when a guy had been to Oxford. So you're saying. When you went to college, you were there as a football player, and so you didn't really get a chance to to, to go down that singing route. But you're thinking if you'd gone down the singing route, you may not have gone to the professional football no, thing. No, and... I, I think that I, I would have because I went to play football. Not that I would have had you to. You were getting because football I was scholarships, a, right? Yeah, but I was I, I was eligible. I, I had an uh, uh, academically, I could have uh, gone to school also. But, you know, you can go football or sports, and why not, you know? Yeah, it gives you a chance to really make the big bucks when you graduate. Well, I, I was not even did thinking about that. Did you finish college? I did. I, okay. I uh, graduated Because I heard you say BS, you were drafted in your junior degree. year. No, my senior year. Oh, okay. It was my senior year. And I signed a scholarship out in the tomato field. <laughs> we had to go find my mama to sign. <laughs> but uh, but that's, that's what happened. And I just... My plan was to go to law school and uh, and be a lawyer. And then in my junior year, I was selected among a group of, uh, I guess you would say, supposedly elite students from Florida and m to go to Florida State Law School. So I went in the, uh, actually in the spring, in the winter, spring of, uh, winter, spring of my junior year. The rest of them were seniors. And I actually was enrolled officially in law school. But things got too busy because I decided I had this big idea. I was working student director of student activities, which was an elected position. And um, I decided I was going to run for president of SGA. So I'm campaigning running for president. And then I'm working as student director. <laughs> and you're a football activity. player. And then we started spring practice. And then I was pledging fraternity. <laughs> You know, my journey. And I'm telling You're you, it don't. Hours in a day. It doesn't mix. It does not mix, and so I got a little overloaded. So I, I, would think. I yeah. So I pull out, which I regret that I did. I should have basically just stayed and dropped all that other stuff. Did we some have, of it. Do you think you would have been happy as a lawyer? Oh, I, I would have been. I think I would have been. I think I would have. I, I think I would have went kind of outside the box and then I mean you look at what lawyers are doing now yeah they're all politicians oh, and yeah. corrupt so, well no there are some good there are some good lawyers there are some good lawyers there are some that will basically don't do you justice um, and do it for the benefit of others even you know do the clients but a lawyer should if they take on a client should represent them in the best possible way but it doesn't always happen that way but yeah I, I, I think I'd have been a, a great lawyer and looking at the commercials and stuff now <laughs> and, and with the contacts that I have you know I would have been definitely tied into the NFL uh, online stuff we got guys I play with that are lawyers now I just didn't I got so busy with other things I got went into business the path you didn't yeah. take but, but, but you know, you I don't regret yes yeah, so and now you're in the music thing uh, when did you do that when did you start that after the football you I started uh, singing <laughs> when I went to the Raiders I was singing already but I'd sing in the shower. You know, guys would tell me to shut up. <laughs> and as a rookie, you know, we at, at, we go to to, to to lunch or dinner, and we'd be in there, and the, upper, up the, the, uh, the veterans would make the rookies sing. 
we had to get up on the table and then we got at the holy balls, you know, and sing. And uh, I was the number one draft pick. And uh, Gene Upshaw and Art Shell and Otis Sistrunk, that group, Willie Brown, all those guys, they make the rookies say it wasn't, wasn't anything brutal, anything, it was just some fun. Right. And uh, so. <laughs> Embarrassing saying, for those that can't carry a tune, but you, so, you blew them away. No, I didn't. No? I purposely, no, because I was knew I would have to do it again and again. So when I got up on the table and I started saying, I sounded as worse as I could sound. <laughs> and then they said, okay, rookie center. And I kept saying, no. And they started throwing stuff at <laughs> me. So they didn't ask me to go up, get up and sing again. <laughs> but uh, what happened, I got uh, the friend that I, I would do booster club meetings. I would go and represent basically the Raiders. And I was up in Chico, California. And they knew that I sang it. And I sat at the jukebox because they scheduled a concert. And I sat at the jukebox all day, about the other day, songs I was familiar with, but I wanted to really. And I did, my first show was Country Western. So that's, I did a Country Western show. <laughs> and it like went over great, you know, and band and everything. And then I ended up having to do another show. The real kicker was Arthur Whittington, who was a running back with the Raiders at the time. He was a nut. And we were doing a big charity benefit. John Matusak, who went to Tampa University, was a number one draft pick my, on my junior year. I played against him, and I did pretty good. But he was the number one pick for the whole NFL. Went to Houston, and he went to Kansas City, I think Washington, but then Al Davis picked him up, and he was unique. Bam was playing. He goes up on stage. He's 6'8", 300-and-something pounds. And he takes the mic from the guy because he was, had been juiced up. And so he decided he was going to sing. So he was up there, oh, he was horrible. And so Arthur Whittington, who was about 5 feet 9, 5 feet 10, was a nut. And he said, hey, get that out off that stage, man. Get kill out there. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not going up there on that stage. <laughs> Face full, you know. And, and so they said, oh, yeah, we had 300 pounders on our team then. And. I was a little light, and I would work my way up to like 285, 295. And we had three on the paddle, so they picked me up and carried me up to the stage. So you're going to sing, you know. So I'm standing there. The band said, well, what are you, you going to sing? I said, well, I don't know. What, what are you guys? The guy says, well, you know any Teddy Pendergrass? Well, I knew all the Teddy Pendergrass stuff. You know, I had never performed it on no stage. I just with his music. So... They said, yeah, so do you know songs? I think it was Get Up, Get Down, Get Funky. It was one of those jamming songs. I said, well, yeah, I said, I can do it. So, well, what key? I said, what key? I, I don't know. Whatever you want, I don't I'll know. go with you guys. Because growing up in church, they get you, you singing this song, never anything about key. They just start playing and you sing. And that was I never with anything mentioned about a key. And I said, well, what key? I said, well, I don't know. I just play it, you know? So they started playing it and I hit it. And they started coming all out from the back. It was slamming. And I said, whoa. <laughs> that football player can sing too. Yeah. So after that, I actually started singing with the band. And things just picked up. I started doing some specials. I started doing some other stuff. It, that's what I, I've always done. But I hadn't like focused on it. And there were opportunities that I allowed to when get away from When you left away from the it. football field and were no longer in professional sports... You took up singing full-time, though, correct? I, no, I didn't because I started a, a business, a uh, technology company selling refill toner cartridges, and then it, it, it evolved into selling uh, chips, computers, software, and everything to the aerospace, and I became consumed with it. I had done some film work, and I did a, a couple episodes of uh, First and Ten HBO series that was on, and then they called me back, they had renewed 12 episodes and I was into my business you know I mean I was doing bids and stuff and I regret that I didn't just stop uh, at least sent the package to the agent I didn't that went well but we're in uh, Barcelona Spain Coach Madden was there he wasn't coaching then now, are you still in professional sports no I was okay you're I had, out I was you've out. got your business I got my business so I smoked a cigar because man I had these great cigars and I smoked I, I, I was drinking some Tequila sunrises or whatever. I go to the room, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at HBO. And here I come on the TV, 
in the show, and I'm speaking Spanish. So you just came back you know, yeah, I'm on to your room TV. and you're yeah, on TV. Yeah, I'm speaking in Spanish. <laughs> I don't know how else is Spanish except que pasa. You were uh, speaking in Spanish? Yeah, well, someone else was. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, was, it was dub. I and, know, um, it just must have been strange yeah. to hear a different so voice I, coming I, out of your mouth. <laughs> but that that's basically it. the things was happening, and then it, I became known and saying it, so I got a chance to do actually so you've had a lot pain. of different careers in your life a little bit of this and a little bit of that I've done God has real, been real good I've been blessed and gave me the talent they given me opportunities and chance to go places that I never would never even thought about now about around, going. here here on the culture coast the Bradenton Sarasota area how often how many nights a week are you playing well it depends Singing. sometime once a week last week I did three three different shows I did uh, Madison's down in Sarasota, and I did Pranas down in Sarasota, and I did Manatee's Sports Grill in Bradenton. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen uh, you. I see you regularly. I'm down in Inglewood Beach quite often. I'm in Bradenton quite often. Occasionally, I'm in Sarasota. Do you have CDs out? I, I've done a couple of CDs that I never officially released. I did a CD when I was playing. Uh, I was supposed to do this movie, and the guy they brought in introduced me to the music producer, producer came to one of my shows and oh he's oh you right you and it basically it was a con man so oh, so we okay. you got to record you know so i recorded this two side uh, 45 uh huh so he calls me up he said oh he says the majors they want they want you to do an album don't you do that i just you know and i was gullible you know so wow you know and so i called my uh accountants you know and stuff said well you know i'm gonna need somebody I said well you know you sure you know so, well, yeah, I think so, but uh, it was a con but you had, deal. And you had people to yeah. look out for you, too, to help and, you not well, make a mistake. I, I, I did, and they, my guy that was uh, told me, said, well, you know, maybe you ought to think about this, you know. And now, your manager, I talked to him a little while ago, he was talking about, you're putting one together right now? We're working on actually looking for material to do some original. I'm, okay. Most of the stuff in the cover. The first album I did was not cover. It was, uh, I call it my white boy version of uh, this kind of mid-range kind of soft rock uh, that I did. I never released it. Uh, so so um, it, it's not even So you're available. working, you're putting one together for release working probably this original, year or next year? Some original. I, I want to say we're going to work on it. And I figure maybe by the first of the year we'll have some because of Do you have a website? Material. We have a website that we What is your website? Re- revamping uh, Henry Lawrence. Henry Lawrence. Uh, dot com. Lawrence dot, dot com. Mm-hmm. No numbers, it nothing might be, fancy. No, but it's, I think it's Henry Lawrence dot com. I'll check and it and we'll post we that just, on the web. Uh, we'll post that on, on the just getting ready to, uh, to, to kick it back off with and kind of keep it. Uh, it's going to be kind of nice. All right. Well, I appreciate you being on Culture Coast, and I wish you the best of luck. And well, What about my three Super Bowls? You've got three Super Bowls? And Pro Bowls. And oh, but they're not in the music well, show. Pro, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the sports show. But not the other part of it now. <laughs> I, I did the, the first Super Bowl we did. I did the party after we won, and I performed. I did performance. <laughs> and it's like everybody, like, oh, you know. So it's been fun. God has really been good. You've had a great and life I've so far. I've had an far. opportunity to and bless others also. there's a whole also. bunch more to go. Yeah. Thank it's... you so much. Great, great Ray Charles. Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song, keep Georgia on my mind. I say Georgia, Ooh, Georgia, 
The largest artist colony in the state of Florida, located on 42 acres, includes artists, homes, galleries, gardens, and restaurants featuring handcrafted gifts, fine art sculptures, painting, photography, enviro art, healing arts, books, mystics, and musical variety. A few of the galleries are unique in their offerings. Village Voices specializes in books and art created exclusively by Florida residents. The Dancing Crane Gallery offers fine art, custom jewelry, and unique innovative art. The Village Mystic offers all things metaphysical, meditation, massage, mediums, aromatherapy, psychic, shamans, reiki healing, and the gem mine where you can mine for your own personal treasure. Yoga Arts offers classes or one-on-one coaching. Musicians and bands can be found throughout the area. Many of the artists and musicians offer classes. Restaurants and bakeries provide respite for the weary and magic for the foodies. Visit during the first Friday Art Walk and stroll through the shops and galleries enjoying free appetizers, wine, music, and demonstrations. For hours and information, please visit the website at www.villageofthearts.com. 